it, it seems to me that that Marx, because he was addressing the various processes that were generating the conditions that we're in today, that even though he wasn't, I would say, I don't, I don't think he was spiritual or religious in any, if you want to use the word spiritual, but he didn't seem to have any sort of, uh, you know, belief in some sort of spiritual or, or realm that is not very, uh, that is not perceived, that cannot be perceived outside of just material conditions, I guess. Um, he acknowledges certain things and you point this out and it's actually pretty interesting because like I said, most of my understanding of Marx has been through a very, uh, through a lens of like, we need to overthrow religion and we need to overthrow these, these oppressive structures. Um, and you know, I think of like Mao's China, you know, like let's get rid of all of the old ways or something like that, or, you know, no religion of any kind. But you tease out certain passages Marx wrote that have a really strong animus quality to them. Um, it's really, yeah. really interesting. I, I, I think I think the one place where, um, you know, I, I, I could kind of go on a, about this for a long time. And, and, and one day, if I ever have the time and the resources for this, I would love to just you know, write out something about all of the alchemical references that uh, Marx uses in in, um, in Das Kapital. Mm-hmm. But, um, <clears throat> you know, there are, there are multiple places where, where he talks about the crystallization of value um, and the, the way that labor transmutes uh, uh, value. Um, you know, both of those are direct references to alchemical language. So, that would that would mean, and, and it wouldn't be surprising because, of course, in the in the eighteen hundreds, you know, almost all intellectuals were had a, had a passing knowledge of 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 alchemy because a, a lot of the the scholars and philosophers from the the century before um, had themselves been alchemists. So even if you didn't believe alchemy was a thing, uh, even if you didn't believe there was any magic or any any real science to the whole thing, you would have been familiar with the language. So, you know, you, you can't immediately say that because Marx uses uh, that language. He, he had, um, you know, any sort of esoteric beliefs. But, but the point that, or the point where he gets shockingly animist is, is when he talks about the organic composition of labor. Um, it's kind of a complicated uh, uh, concept, but, but, um, oh, actually, you know, I, I can find the quote while we're doing it. I, I almost have it memorized, but um, it, it's when he talks about dead labor, um, and 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 he, for some reason, you know, and, and he doesn't he doesn't do this elsewhere, um, but uh, he talks about vampirism, <laughs> and, and and it was it was one of the places where I was like, wait a minute, what are you doing? You're not you're not. <laughs> you're not as atheist as you're as you're letting everybody on to, mm-hmm, or, mm-hmm. or you're making everybody else think. Um, but uh, the um, I, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find it it's here. Okay. But basically, he says um, um, uh, capital is dead labor. That vampire life, uh, vampire like, sucks the life of living labor and lives the more the more it sucks. So in that passage, he's, he's talking about how. Uh, it, He's talking about a primitive, primitive accumulation, which is um, the way that capital was gotten from slaves, from colonial pillaging and conquest, um, from enclosure and other just seizures of wealth. Um, that wealth is what became the capital that the capitalist class now um, and in the beginning of capital used to build factories um, to buy large spots of land in order to grow cotton, um, to buy the slave, to buy more slaves, to pick that cotton, to then send it to to um, to mills that would comb it and then change it into clothing, etc. <clears throat> um, so he, he's he's talking about that that wealth that they started out with as being dead labor, which is to say that that it came from living people who, who worked the lands, um, who, who worked in the factories, etc., um, and created wealth. That wealth is what the, the capitalist takes. And then, uh, you know, like vampires, it continues living, um, 
by sucking more um, off of living labor. So, uh, you know, the the best thing is there are, a good way to look at this is that let's look at all of the money that was gotten from slavery, uh, uh, from the transatlantic slave slave trade, etc. Um, you know, that money didn't go away when when the slaves were freed. The the people who had accumulated all of that wealth then needed to invest it somewhere else. They they couldn't keep using slaves anymore. So a lot of them opened up factories. Um, or they opened up banks, so they bought lots of property, etc. Um, and then they hired more people to work in those. Now they had to hire them. They couldn't just force people to do it any longer. Um, and then those people who were working for them increased the wealth of the of the rich person, of the capitalist. Um, and, and so therefore made that original accumulation, that primitive accumulation of, of slave capital, um, become bigger like and that's how it continues existing but you know he's when, when he talks about dead labor when he talks about the, the the way that capital is is composed organically yeah if you were to look at at, at most animist traditions from uh, south america from africa um you would see that you know this isn't a concept that's weird to them at all they're like no of course like he's he's talking about ancestors like he's talking about the way that 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 we continue to live the lives of our ancestors that that everything around us was built by the dead and and we are composed of the dead you know like we we eat dead things and and we continue to live and and then we will die and feed more life um <laughs> you know like out of out of nowhere supposedly this 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 complete atheist who who hates religion and all of that um, hits on a on, on a deeply animist concept and uses that to explain how the capitalists are constantly exploiting not just us in the present but continue to exploit our ancestors and the wealth that they got from those ancestors. Yeah, it's um, <sighs> yeah, that's that's you know you you bring up something which is makes I I think people who defend or yeah yeah defend capitalism i guess or believe it's sort of based on this sort of idea of freedom of entrepreneurship and all these things like that capitalism is the best version of human nature right that this comes from our impulse to i don't know to to make something of ourselves whatever that means right um, and, and what really blew my mind and you, you go over this in your book and it, it seems to be in direct reference to what Sylvia Federici brings up in her book, Caliban and the Witch and other writings she has written, um, which is, you know, through the enclosures, through the witch hunts, that was, that's the big part of it, right? It's the, the sort of getting rid of those that stand in, even just in the way they live in, and, and exist in the world, stand in opposition to the new order that was emerging uh, after feudalism was kind of seen to be not really relevant any longer and they were moving into a new uh, new way of, of doing things. And all of these things had to be passed. And this was all done through the state, right? You had powerful governments that were kind of imposing these new things on people. Um, and, uh, you know, you mentioned the enclosures, which literally is like to close off land that was once the commons that the peasants basically would share. And that was not available to them any longer, or it was really, really restricted. And this was happening all over Europe, right? And we can kind of see how that gave rise to, you know, the privatization of nature and, and practically everything else. Um, in order for this system to even exist at all, there had to be slavery. There had to be the the enclosures, the witch hunts, like the level of violence that had to be thrown at people over hundreds of years to create the conditions required for capitalism to function at all. It's like completely forgotten almost like it's not in it's not present in the awareness or consciousness of many people anymore. <laughs> 